I've got this longer 60 inch piece that we'll get to in a moment. So I'll start with something that's really wonky, There's just this piece of cedar. So you can see that it doesn't want to sit in any particular orientation. This side is a little worse. So when I joint it, I'm going to try putting even pressure, not a lot of pressure, because I want the blade to do the work as I go across. But even pressure in the middle of the rock is going to be my goal. So we'll see if I, that works out for us. And to make it super obvious, more work to go as you can see that this whole area right in here still has to go but I thought I'd take a moment and say that so far I have very little pressure that I'm actually compressing down and that's again because this board is not flat um, I find that I have to use a lot more pressure if my table is not well waxed so that might be something that get out your paste wax or your let's see what else I've got in here You can use something like this blade coat that's supposed to keep things well lubricated. It, I bought it to um, initially to keep blades from burning or bits. Um, this is also supposed to be a lubricant. I don't, I've used plenty of it for a while and I can't say that I'm a fan of it. I've tried it plenty. But now I just sprayed on tools heavily when I don't want them to rust and I'm not going to be in the shop for some time or they're going to be in deep storage for a bit. Um, most recently I've paste wax, but I'm interested in trying this because it just seems fast to put down a spray. Uh, but that's one of the things that's helped me the most is, is having more glide on my table. Um, now that it's flat, potentially enough. I might, I oftentimes like that once I can use a hook on the end to go for that. And the reason I like that is, is that it makes me not have to put nearly as much pressure on things. The reason I didn't initially was, is that I was trying to find that equilibrium between all the different spots on this board. But now this front part is really flat. So I do think that I can go here and then I'm not trying to do any downward pressure, but just trying to keep it going. Once I have a little bit more of a flat zone on the heel of this piece, so I just barely have a flat zone on the heel here. It's, it's enough. Um, what I next really start to focus on is, is that uh, all my pressure is gonna go on the out feed table, so really, a lot of times I might actually get into a kind of a grapevine motion with some um, paddles over here. So boop, 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 on we go. So that might help you out a bit. And I'll demonstrate both of those for you.
I was trying to say was is that I wanted all my weight out here because this is your reference face. This is not your reference face um, because of where the blade's position that this becomes your big reference face. Um, I find that the more pressure I can add over here, um, so not adding any at the very front of this is important. And when I have wood that's gliding well, I prefer the grapevine, so paddle over paddle a little bit more. I'll go ahead and put an edge on this while I'm here, and then we'll move on to there. But similar thing, I'm just trying to figure out which edge to go with. Um, I don't have to worry about grain direction as much because of the helical head. Uh, I know that that side right there is high at the end. This side's got a bunch of knots though, so... I know I'm going to get a better cut here than I will on the table saw. So I'll do that one. And my main reference for this whole piece will be against the fence. And again, that outfeed out there. I've actually seen one instructor teach this that well since this big obnoxious pork chop is here might as well use it so while you're passing a piece through you actually use your torso your belly and add direct pressure there not so much that you prevent the flow of the wood but another way to keep your fingers further away and then it's really your comfort over the cut zone so some people will never put their fingers there Others will, um, knowing that you still have the blade protection on. So just use what your sense of hand over the cut zone or use at least four inches of distance or whatever sort of your level <coughs> of comfort there. Um, I will show you using the belly. This looks good to me, so I just put a J on sides that have been jointed. Hopefully that is a little bit of helpful input. Now, moving on to a longer piece. So this one's got a high spot right there. So if you had a shorter bed, you would of course keep missing out on some of that. That just kind of continues. So right here used to be the highest spot and it would touch here. So touch high. But then as we continue going, like here's now touching and it keeps getting higher. Obviously I've got the, the blade that's preventing it from continuing to really get this in the same plane. And so that is where you benefit if you have a reason to cut a piece to go ahead if you're getting big gaps on your reference. Um, 
but if you can't and you've got to use this, of course the longer bed is the most helpful. And then sort of the downfall is, is that if you can't do any of that, you don't have a short bed um, or this bed, even though it's huge um, or long, it's still not long enough to get to the very end. There's a chance that I'm going to keep a banana shape and that's going to be the best I can do. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I don't have a way to get totally rid of it all. So we've moved on from cedar to a piece of maple here. And again, I'm just going to have enough reference or enough pressure, but if I overdo this, I am going to flatten it which is actually not what I want to do. So try to have as little forward um, or as little downward pressure as possible to keep while still continuing to feed it. actually pretty much what I was hoping for so I started really getting a nice reference face right here we got a little bit on this side right here um, I don't know if we actually got that or if my lines went to a stopping spot over there but then we did get this very tail end so I worked really hard to not um, press down really at all during that pass so that the cutter head was doing it all versus me flexing the wood a ton. We'll do the same thing for this one. I can kind of feel where I think I changed my paddles. I have a little ridge right there, one right there. So as little change as possible is ideal. Uh, I'll show you a silly thing that I've rigged up. A little long for this particular piece. But once I needed, I was doing a big long piece and so, and it was having no desire to glide. So I'll show you what this is like one time here. And then I'll keep my paddles here in case I'm just not liking this at all.
I set this up, this hook was more than enough. And you saw there at the end, I had to be really careful to make sure that the jointer, I was lifting this up a little bit. So I don't know how well of a demo that actually turned out to be. Besides that, I got to have really nice, consistent forward momentum. I can feel a lot of difference right in here. See how it's looking on a reference face. just a tough board. Keep going. So you can see that I don't have any of my pencil lines. It feels really smooth to the touch, except for this bump right here. The rest of that one must be figure. So I would still give it one more pass. And then let's check and see how it's doing on a reference face. Still got a decent amount of spring in here. So I guess maybe a next potential step would be is, is taking a few light passes here, just this little bit, to see if you can get it down. But I intentionally brought a pretty challenging piece out of my wood pile. I've had this piece for a solid 10 years. I've had it stored outside a fair bit of that time. I decided to mix up my technique a little bit. Still feel it being a little higher right there. In a sense that as soon as it crossed over the blade, I started using some downward pressure. Didn't make a bit of difference. <laughs> Still has just as much spring as when we started.
All right, it's stickered enough in there. <laughs> it's a long board is the same problem. So my guess is that might be what you're running into. Um, so far, I would have to go and look up and see if anyone else has any more recommendations, but my really only real recommendation is, is that it's just longer than the bed, and because of that, it's just getting a false reading consistently. Wish I had better things to recommend, but that would be sort of my problem solving ability right there. <laughs> 